Hey everybody and welcome back to the Soda Pop Podcast. I am your host, Kaya Williams, and I'm here with a very, very nostalgic kind of host or guest, Kat. You could never get rid of me. Kat disappeared, but they're back and we're going to talk about it. But first, we have to do our fresh squeeze, which we're going to do throughout this episode because I went to the gas station today to get lemonades that I typically do. Is this a new bit we've been doing? Yes. Oh, great. I can tell you haven't been listening. It's called Fresh Squeeze. We drink lemonades and uh, talk about songs. Um, but we don't have lemonades this week because there's a Skittle brand of drinks that I didn't know existed until now. You know, every popular candy company and stuff's going through mid-like crises of what if we just try something else instead of sticking with the classic thing that everybody loves and still just buys anyway? Of course. So uh, before we do that, let's talk about uh, what music we've been listening to. What music? Yeah. Okay. Or a playlist. So mine's going to be a little weird because mm-hmm. uh, it's not exactly a normal song, but we're going to go with uh, It's Going Down Now. Ooh. It is from, it is pr- performed by a uh, performer named Lotus Juice. Uh, and it is uh, for a game called Persona 3 Reload. Oh, they made, per- oh, wait, no. We're on we're on Persona like 6 now, aren't we? We're on Persona 5. But instead oh. of making Persona 6, they remade Persona 3. Okay. Uh, and it came out like sometime in February. Uh, and they kept the classic battle thing, which is already great. But if you get like a specific like jump on the enemy where you get an advantage they made a completely new theme and that's the new theme so because i played the original and all the other songs lived rent free in my head the new one had to live re- rent free in my head as well of course i've been listening to jay christ by little nas x um i'm waiting for that album to release and i'm praying i think he released the name of it i haven't looked yet but i really want the album to be named um genesis so bad because of the religion theme oh god i'm trying to give you smr Ooh, that was nice I don't know what the smell is. I think my nose is off. Good smell. I mean, I probably won't be able to smell. We're anyway, doing the but we're first one it. is wild berry. It's a weird smell between like a typical juice flavor and the weird sweet smell of a skittle. It is. It's almost potpourri like, if that okay. makes any sense. So I believe so. Because this is wild berry. It's not like it's the different colors of the skittles. Like you're not getting the red skittle. Yeah. You're getting like a whole pack because yeah, there's, there's like the color. wild berry packs. So like, is this going to taste like a specific color or did they just I crush a bunch flavors. of Skittles into a ju- uh, thing of juice? That is what I'm curious about. Let's look up the flavors while we do this. Why look up the flavors? Kat, what have you been up to? What have I been up to? Um, oh, tell people where you went. Let's start with Oh, uh, yeah. So there's this neat little thing called a bigger college called the University of Alabama. Uh, to focus on uh, news media and communications because at higher levels, they have their own news station there Ooh. that you get to run with classes regardless of internships, and then internships will double up on that. Oh. Uh, and for some reason, this isn't th- a weird thing, but we rock with it. Um, all communications majors, or CNIS, Communications and Information Sciences, uh, have to have a minor. Oh, what's your minor? Acting. Of course. <laughs> See, I was originally going to go with creative media, which is basically the acting and like producing side of it. But there's too many creative media classes that go into news media that you said you couldn't minor in it. And I said, cool, I'll just go with regular theater then. Okay. I'm, uh, if you're watching the video of this, I am puffing it like paint. I promise I'm not getting high. However, it has a citrusy smell and I'm not sure why. The flavors are berry punch, raspberry, strawberry, wild cherry, and melon berry. It's giving me that very, you know, when you just have a, when they just say it's fruit crunch in a bowl and you have no idea what's really in it. Yeah. It's giving me that Yeah, smell. they always add Sprite to it. So let's go for it. Let's Cheers. see if there's Sprite in here. <laughs> I should have grabbed water before we did this. Mm, well, that. You know what I'm going to. It tastes like Jello. That, yeah. Before it sets. You know what I was about to say? I, you, you're, I'm, it's not wrong. Like, you know how the, like, it is inherently a Skittle flavor, like the flavor of the wild yeah. berry Skittles, which are mid to begin with. I think wild berry Skittles are like the worst of the Skittles. I think the tropical ones are. Oh, that's good. I don't try either of them. I go sour or classic. Let's yeah. be real here. Um, But it's inherently tastes like the wild berry Skittles. But if, yeah, you made them an unset jello. Is it like you just sucked up an unset jello or like a jello that melted? Like, or like the little no. skim on top of jello. Oh, what I was gonna say is like you know when you first mix up the jello and it's still the water, 
Like if you just forgot to set it, like put it in the fridge to get set and you just left it on the, like your counter and then it just cooled down from being hot, but like it never set because it wasn't in a cold place and then you drank it. Yeah. That's exactly what I just drank. Which it's like, it's like unset Skittle Jello, which I hope that makes sense for people watching. It probably doesn't. I, there, there, I feel like there are Jello brand, like brand Jello. Yeah. Skittle brand Jello packets like probably everything. because they have like brand everything else and they i i wouldn't put it past skittles to do that and they probably just took a similar formula okay now we're going on to tropical skittles yeah we gotta stop we gotta start with the mid ones you know get them out of the way first i hope this is good asmr for people oh no i don't like the smell of that we knew this one was gonna be worse oh i don't like the smell of it there's uh -huh. two i can smell oh. the banana yeah i can smell the problem of why tropical uh, Skittles are mid, which is just like you're you, when you smell tropical Skittles, you already know they're bad. Okay, this is reminding me of a very specific drink. It's called Calypso. It reminds me of like a, a like a banana flavored one that I don't like, and I like the taste of banana. Okay, let's be real though. Banana stuff, like bananas are like yeah. artificial banana things, like a banana laffy, laffy taffy or the Disgusting. runs and stuff. Those can why be, am I pouring myself so those much? Those can be deep, like banana artificial stuff can either be good or abysmal, and usually the drinks mo go on more of the abysmal side. Yeah, but like a a run, a banana run, that's a good banana thing. Yeah. Um. So before we try this one, and I look up the flavors of what is in a tropical skittle, cat, have you enjoyed Tuscaloosa so far? Um. Yeah, I mean, there's been stuff going on, like, because, first off, rent-free right now, mm -hmm. because I was staying at my grandfather's house. Uh, the thing is, though, um, because he has passed away, mm -hmm. um, they originally wanted to sell the house. So, at first, it was, like, looking for a roommate, and now I've decided, wait, but what if we bought the house and then got, room like, spruced it up and then got roommates, and yeah. then, like, maybe do stuff with it after I... So now we're buying the house, but they're still, like, selling all his stuff. Mm -hmm. So, like, I go to classes, and then on the weekend, uh, you know, the time usually you're a little bit free from stuff, um, helping whoever's going up, uncles, parents, stuff, recleaning the house to sell everything. So it's been very chaotic with that, but it's rent-free, so we deal with the downsides to get have not have to pay rent. It is what it is. I'm I'm paying attention. I swear I am. I'm also just trying to figure out the smells. Okay, so the flavors are banana berry, which you can tell, kiwi lime, which I don't feel like I'm smelling as much, pineapple passion fruit. I feel like I smell the passion fruit more than I am the pineapple. For sure. Strawberry star fruit. Don't know what star fruit tastes like, but I get a little bit of a citrus at the end, which I think is the lime, but I don't no, get any there's kiwi. There's one more. Is mango tangelo. That's and definitely I feel like where the I'm citrus. smelling the yeah. tangelo. Yeah, I think kiwi lime just. Is gonna be behind. It's not as strong as flavors. Yeah, no. Once once I I identified this as Jello, I'm all smelling just Jello versions of this. It's like you took four, what five Jello flavors and mixed them into one thing and then drank it. Very much so. Cheers. Why am I pouring so much of this in these cups? I don't know. Okay, so at first, my the first... The aftertaste is not fun. That's what I was about to say. At first, I was like, the mix is not that bad. It's not as bad as I thought. And then the aftertaste is just pure banana. It's just like I rubbed a Laffy Taffy on my tongue. Yeah, and not like a good banana. It was just like, it was like hey, this actually became a nice blend banana. Which, no. Because before, I'm like, this is just like a nice, like, tropical little juice. Like, I was like, mm, I would get this again. No. I was like, yeah, this is going to be, this is better than tropical Skittles, because maybe them together works out better. The banana is too overpowering. Very much so. Very, very much so. Do not love. Do not love. It's definitely the lower option so far. Okay, we're going to go with sour Skittles. Um, You may have noticed that Grayson's not here. Yeah. Uh, which I inherently am curious about these, um sour skittles because i gotta say i mess up some sour skittles it does in fact smell sour because like the sour no. skittles look if you don't uh eat a whole thing of sour skittles and your tongue isn't literally dying by the end of it you didn't eat sour skittles not at all um that's purely because i don't know what grayson's schedule and, is and <laughs> <laughs> i would have invited grayson to try these with us but i don't know what his grayson is. is an enigma grayson is like a fae he shows up when he shows up and, and produces <laughs> episodes. I don't know anything else. <laughs> Sorry, Grayson. Uh, okay. I poured myself a reasonable amount. Reasonable amount. We have lemon, strawberry. I have more faith in this one. <laughs> um, green apple and grape. 
I'm expecting it to taste almost similar to when we did this like last year, actually. Um, the the world shout out Stang, which Stang actually is pretty good. It that was thing good. Was, it was, was just good sour. Who? Um, which I gotta say, isn't that the classic Skittle flavors just with sour on them? Um, the classic one instead of green apple with lime. Oh, uh, got it. They want to add a little extra sour. Yeah. So that's that. But I don't know where Grayson is. That's the only reason Grayson's not here. Yeah, we could have had, you know, tasting weird sodas part two, electric boogaloo. Electric boogaloos. But Grayson's not here. So it's just tasting weird Skittle sodas instead. I'm sorry, Grayson. Here we go. It's not bad, but I want more. That's what I was about to say. It's not bad, but like I go sour Skittles over other sour candies because it destroys you. It's so sour. And then you get that little sweet flavor at the end, which is a good balance. It's like a better Sour Patch Kid because I don't want to be chewing on that gummy for five hours. It is like a Sour Patch Kid, but it's like it's it's like the watermelon ones Mm -hmm. where it's not sour enough. What I was about to say, yeah, because like I was going to say like sour skittles are more sour than sour patch kids and then you don't have to eat them a lot so they're better this has more not as sour and got more fruity flavor than a traditional skittle which just makes it feel like i'm drinking more of a sour patch kid thing than i am i'm going in again because i didn't get a taste other than sour and i'm trying to figure out what the flavor profile so you want that's fair another little shoddy shot i will say this is the best one so far yes it has been the best one for so far i would it's because the other ones are like not a especially that banana like not a thing i drink this one's just like give me a little more sour in there these are all very citrus forward but i am getting a little bit of grape yeah i get the grape i'm getting the grape i get a little bit of strawberry there like a little bit of sweetness in there sometimes but it's very it's like very minute i don't know if that's strawberry or is it apple i thought the apple would add more sourness but maybe it is it doesn't have to be it says green apple but it doesn't mean that i put in green apple because i feel like i'm biting into like a crisp apple right now very true. I wish Marquise was here because Marquise loves apples. And Oh, you don't have to tell me that. <laughs> he was in my orchestra in Florence and they gave free apples for breakfast. He wouldn't even buy the breakfast. He'd just get like a tray of like five apples because they know. were tiny. For his birthday, I bought him a bag of apples. He was so happy. I, I got him. A, we also got him a hat for Christmas and we also got a bag of apple. I'm pretty sure he enjoyed that bag of apples. With oh, 100%. It's, it's so easy to, to make Marquise happy. Just give him Apples. What does he even do here? I just know he exists. At, orchestra. So. He does the orchestra. I knew he did the um, orchestra. And then he's part of Soda Student Leaders. Mm, it's Student Leaders. Got it. Yeah. Because I know he's just part of Soda, and I was like, what does he do? He's, he's our social media man. If you know who Marquise is, shout out to Marquise. Love him. I will say, it's also, there was one time I was hanging out in the game room last semester. Mm-hmm. Marquise, still a senior at Florence High School. Knew him because he was in orchestra with me, right? Um, leaving... Um, the game room no one else is in the main area because it is right before a rehearsal for christmas carol so it's like seven o'clock it's like six or seven he's sitting alone at a chair and i'm like marquise why are you here and he's like i don't know i walked here and i'm like what do you mean you walked here this is a college campus you're in high school this is nowhere near the high school the most marquise Uh everything so now we're on to the last flavor which is original so i went in there today I'm a weak little baby. Okay. To um, buy these. So which gas station had these? Uh, The Chevron near, what is it? Browley? Browler? Whatever yeah. stadium it is. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm dyslexic. I think it's Brawley Stadium. This smell, it's this smells the most like just a pack of Skittles. Like, I feel like I just opened a pack of Skittles with that. And you know how, like, like I get, it, it tastes like, it smells like a pack of Skittles have been jellified. It's still got that weird jello. Yeah, it's, smell it's, to it. it just is a pack of Skittles. Which is very fair, because, like, I can't tell you what a pack of Skittles smell Smells. like. They smell like a pack of Skittles. But it's like a, they bottled a bag of Skittles. Okay. I'm fully expecting this to taste like jellified Skittles. That's what I'm all I'm guessing. Of course, the flavors are lime, orange, grape, lemon, strawberries. I find it so interesting. I thought they would have gone with the original five flavors and made, like, a flavor of like a strawberry skittle flavor right that's what i thought but they blended all of them together that's in a pack into that, one bottle which is i feel weird like if we're gonna go for a capitalistic standpoint it makes more sense to do each one and each you could have got more money because like that. then you get 20 drinks baby exactly. I, I feel like it might cost more to produce but you know cheers 
Well, especially with the regular Skittles and the sour Skittles, all you got to do is put some sour stuff in your regular Skittles drink, and now you got the sour one. Yeah, like it's so easy. Whatever. Mm. Don't love that. Prefer the sour. A hundred percent prefer the sour so far. I don't know if it's the red forty or what, but it's like thrown off. I'd like some flavor with my sugar. Yeah, no. Because the thing that hits you the most is just, it just tells like I'm drinking like sugar water. Like I know what these taste like now. I was about to say what this one kind of tastes like. You know, when you get those drinks that are like fruit infused and it's like a tiny hint of fruit. Yeah. It's like that. But instead of uh, carbonating it, they just dumped a bunch of sugar into it. You know, when you go to a snow cone place and they put the syrups on it. That's what that is. They just sold a syrup and they watered it down. Sold, they just watered down <laughs> the little syrup. I'm not. How much one. you want to bet there's Skittle snow cones somewhere? I'm pretty sure that's what this one is, and they just watered it down so it's not as concentrated. Because it's far. This one is far too sugary. That's what. I, this is what that tastes like. Because when your snow cone melts. And oh my god! And you're getting just that sugar water with a little bit of flavor. That's what this is. This thing is so sugary. If you want just sugar, grab the original. Filtered water, sugar, apple juice, concentrate, natural flavors, whatever, whatever. Red forty. <laughs> this is just watered down syrup. <laughs> Why does it have apple juice I mean, in it? That's technically like most things have pear juice in it for you know mm. that for like juices. Whenever it's a flavored juice, it's typically pear juice. Yeah, no, pear juice because pear juice is not very like apple has a f- distinct flavor. That's why I'm like, why does it have apple? I don't know. Especially what, what does does this one have apple in it? I mean, this one have apple. I in feel it? like that one would make more sense with apple because it has a great apple. Yeah. They all have apple. In it. I was expecting to see pear juice. Interesting. Maybe that's what helps with some more of a distinct flavor from them. Yeah. Yeah, no, they all have apple juice. So I will say blues at the bottom, tropical. Yeah. I'm putting sours at the top for sure. No, I'm putting blue at the bottom, then I'm putting the original, then I'm putting wild berry, and then I'm putting sour. Yeah, I would say I think so, because I was in a debate between wild berry and the original, but I think I'd rather have some flavor that's kind of mid than just sugar. Yeah. Like if so. I gave this to a toddler, they're 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 tearing it up no matter what. Oh, they're taking they're tearing it up no matter what, but they're probably gonna go for the red one, let's be real. A hundred percent. So this is this is a this was an interesting thing. Yeah. Um, but no, what else have you been up to? What have you been doing? What have you been thinking? What have you right. been cosplaying? So the fun thing is I decided because there is no game room to just randomly force people to play games with yeah. or um podcast to work on, that the next best solution would be join a bunch of clubs. <laughs> so one, it's mostly gone How away did now, you bruise yourself? is with this. Uh, so I join a neat little club called Fencing. Oh, and last Monday, or yeah, the Monday before, you know, the one of this week, because we record yeah. on Fridays. So uh, I was fencing this new guy, and he decided to just be the most aggressive man known to uh, known to the world. Some stuff Kyle would pull if she ever fenced. <laughs> so most people, because I'm doing foil, so there's three types. Saber, which is where the aggressive people go, what you do, is just sword fighting. Everything's on target. You can jump, duck, swing, and you just swing the sword. If you strike them, I you feel win. So called out. Like I watch this. And where and can I sign up? <laughs> I've wanted to do this, but I haven't tried it yet because I've been doing. I want to do this one yeah. and the one I usually do. Uh, I literally watched my friend and his girlfriend. His girlfriend goes to hit her legs because two legs, you know, it's harder to dodge. His solution: he jumped over her blade and smacked her on the head. <laughs> The normal one, which is foil, which is most people know, which is where you can only hit the chest, and it's more about, like, precise targets. Mm -hmm. Being left-handed, it's more defense. Defensive, I plan people to go, parry, strike. That's Mm -hmm. my plan, because I'm left-handed, it's naturally more defensive, because your blades are on the same size. He went so fast that when I parried him, instead of the blade completely annoying, he just slammed into my arm. I still got the point, but it's been over a week, nearly two, and I still have the bruise from him just going for it and hitting me in the arm. And I'm like, what would have happened if I didn't parry and he just slammed into my chest? <laughs> Who knows? And then there's the weird, like, middle cousin one. What is that, the middle cousin? It's called Epe, and it's, like, bigger guard and more stuff's on target. 
but you still have to hit with the end of the blade and like be more target. So it's not like the full out crazy or the make sure you hit with the tip on certain areas. Like so like foils, precision, sabers, swing like a madman. Epe's the weird middle cousin uh, between the two. Okay. What other clubs yep. have you been in? Uh, the next one would be, that's like the two important ones really is called the SOS Brigade. Mm-hmm. Really weird name. They just run Gamicon. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. And so you can go, and if you work in the club, you have to, you get to volunteer for work, Camicon, get exclusive staff perks, including uh, merch, uh, free hotel connected to the con, the one right across the street, um, it's staff the discount. The one of the two. I used to work at it. <laughs> yeah, it's the, because it's, yeah, it's in Birmingham. It's, it's yeah, the it's Sheraton a, right across the street. The Sheraton, that's what it was. I used to work with it, that's all. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so basically you get all the perks, free thing, free food, they have a staff room, and you've got to work like a few hours a day i think it's supposed to total somewhere around 15 hours it's mm-hmm. not bad 15 hours the whole con you get to That's get off the rest of it um and uh yeah so i did that and then got to know stuff about the con early and got free access to the con and hotel really close to it cool did you do anything like, fun with that um so the the regular job i worked uh was the cami shop so I got customer service, <laughs> but it's not that bad because you know, when you usually have Karens, no Karen is going to show up to a con. You just have a bunch of shy people in cosplay that need to talk a little louder so I can understand what they want. That's fair. <laughs> and the other thing is they do a little stupid stage play Oh. where the con girls have like an argument and they knew which one wins decides the next theme. And they have uh, anime characters interject and stuff. And this was the year of villains. Mm-hmm. So all so one of the uh, con girls who went uh, disappeared, her name's Shio, um, gets this group of light-based villains together to purge the darkness, because the theme before this was darkness, mm-hmm. uh, from Kosho's uh, villainous con and win back the day. And so we had uh, a bunch of villains... And I played one of those villains. Of course. Light Yagami from Death Note. <laughs> <laughs> With just the pure amount of like most extra when he's gone insane at the end. And he's like, it's my greatest victory. I win. <laughs> and so each uh, character had a little competition during the thing. Like one of the live gaming events yeah. was to the story. Okay. And so uh, mine was to pick people in a ramen eating contest. And I had to pick two of the finalists and uh, other two would be the other team. I didn't win. So I threw the death note in front of him and ordered him to write his name in the book. And he picked it up and did. So that's a thing. Uh, which made it, which uh, got a huge reaction from the audience. Because we do one at the opening and then one to announce the details of like the act two. Yeah. I came in and I was like, they must have cheated because uh, I lost. And that's like my line because I'm like, uh, everything was done to perfection, but they must have cheated because I lost. But worry not, Lady Shio. It has been handled accordingly as I hand the book out there. And so like the whole audience just started like freaking out because I just implied I murdered a con girl, and that's a thing. Oh, I don't remember. Uh, and then one of the con girls was like, uh, I don't even know how to react to that. Uh, you can have the point, I guess. So that was fun. Uh, the other ones was some of them are obvious and one of them i'm still trying to figure out so the first one is admiral kizaru from one piece okay uh he has a devil fruit that literally lets him turn into light and move at the speed of light so that you know, light based villain turns into light that's pretty easy next is azula which we literally have an argument and thing about if that counts as an anime character or not uh, and then <laughs> she interrupts us um but fire firebender yeah uh, th- that's it the other one was toga Mm-hmm. From My Hero Academia? Yeah. How is she light? I don't know. Don't ask, Kaya. Because she, like... I stay away from My Hero Academia for she, a like, reason. She drinks blood and turns into, like, other people. She, like, shapes I stay blood. away from Hero, My Hero Academia for So reason. it genuinely curiouses me, like, how this is meant to be light. Because it addresses how light is members of the light-based villains. Because I have a whole thing of how I get mad that they didn't choose me because of my uh, godlike... And power over death itself or my superior intellect but instead because my name is literally light and it fits the theme of light based villains yeah because that's fun to scream about of course. of course it was fun um but like i'm trying to figure out toga like seriously like don't i don't know. know but you know i don't make the rules toga's a light based villain now <laughs> with her blood of powers i guess um they did say they were going to put Griffith in it from berserk mm-hmm. but berserk is like clearly rated him so they said no because no. griffith 
uh, terrible human being, is called the Hawk of Light when he leads his group. So, and then the other one, which is not a light based villain, she ha- he helps the other side is Buggy the Clown. <laughs> so that was great. Uh, and the theme who won because uh, the vil- light based villains won uh, or lost was the uh, other group, Kosho and Buggy. And so Buggy used his powers to turn next season into a Comic Con carnival. I love that. So next year's stage play, apparently we're going to have a bunch of carnival themed characters. So I'm really curious who that's going to be. Do you do just the Birmingham Comic Con or do you do Birmingham and Huntsville? Uh, We do both. But because I joined super in late into Huntsville, I just got, uh, I didn't work the Huntsville one last year, but I probably will. Or yeah, I probably will when it happens this fall. Okay. And they're th- that was the first year they're thinking about doing, like, growing it and doing stage plays now. But that one's space-themed, so I don't know what the characters are going to be for that one either. Not at all. Because that's two space and carnivals. Who oh, knows? boy. Um, but besides that, for uh, things, it's just been other classes. Like, I didn't get put in the... Th- I got called back for one of their theater shows. Because first off, they had five theater shows. Yeah. Th- uh, two last semester and three this semester but one was like really early mm-hmm. because they rehearsed over the break and i was i only got called back for one mm-hmm. and i was like man and then i walked in and realized like all the people that were getting called back for the main roles were grad students and i was like oh yeah big university and they don't separate grad students ain't no chance i'm getting a big role here yeah. let's be real mm-hmm. yeah i mean other things have just been normal oh. um two D D campaigns that people won't show up to i'm fine of course yeah are you dming or both of them of course i was like yeah. are you i'm like are you playing again or are you one DMing? of them one of them still the one that was going last time fighting an evil um winter god that's permanently not How making the sun that? come up year and a half now okay but like we're actually making progress where they start at level one they're level eight now and it actually levels slowly it's not like our campaign where it was like you went you did one thing level up got it <laughs> <laughs> um the other one is that book uh ravenloft uh quote unquote sexy rat lady i love sexy rat they lady. fought sexy rat lady <laughs> we had an adventure there they all got sick and nearly died love they didn't beat her they had to run away okay sexy rat lady's too strong we love sexy rat lady also we're gonna talk about how i butchered that name so do you remember what i called it and called her no good uh it's because it's french inspired i realize now oh so the actual name of the place is Rishmalu. Oh, not oh, what I was called. Rich Mod or something? No. Oh, I was called Rich Mulo. Oh, and the other one was Jacqueline Ronier. Oh, I just called her Sexy Rat Lady. Yeah, and so that's how you said because she's pretty Jacqueline Ronier. Jacqueline Ronier. She's so fancy. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's um, yeah. Uh, I did do a creepy scene in it because um, the problem was we had a player that joined that was not allowed to join the thing because they have a terrible fear of rats. Mm-hmm. So every time a creepy thing happened with rats, I was just like, okay, bye, you're out. <laughs> um, we saw basically the equivalent of the Pied Piper for rats. Um, and he was like chanting all the rats. And then she shows up and talks to him and then steals his flute and then has all the rats eat him alive. Oh. Yeah. Love. And then they found the, the the flute, which they were supposed to a simple like cleaning spell, mending spell, would uh, fix it because it's a broken magic item. Um, and then they could use it to charm all the rats, which would have all the other rats besides the were rats like calm down. Because by the way, the guards are full suits of armor full of rats. Yes. And so once you beat up the rat, the armor falls I off. need to know, have you played the Ratchelor yet? <laughs> have you not played the Ratchelor? No. Do you know what the Ratchelor is? No. It's the Bachelor, but with the rats. It's a free online game that you can play. I could assume what it was as soon as you and said it, but I don't. And one of them is literally just like... Let's go. <laughs> um... One of my friends before we started Ravenloft, who had no idea about Rishmalu, wanted to play three rats in a trench coat. And I was like, "See, there's not a there's a reason I don't want to let you do this." There's like I could, but it's gonna be really really difficult for you, <laughs> right? Um, and so, and they were supposed to use it, but um, one of the characters, whose name's Sundan, he's just a monkey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's like a dude that was raised by monkey, so he's like part monkey now. Um, kept trying to play the flute, which it has to be attuned by a bard. We had a bard, that's why I did it. Uh, and not told anybody about it. So it just, he knew what it did because he saw the vision of how the Pied Piper used it. And that's why he kept playing it. He just didn't know to hand it to someone to get mended and they could use it. So he just kept terribly playing this flute, <laughs> like this rusted, broken flute. And it just wasn't working. And if he tried to roll performance for that once, he tried like 30 times. Mm-hmm. It just kept getting worse. And they also didn't realize that rats... Uh, one of them got turned into a were rat because I'm evil like that. Of course. Um, because they were supposed to make a contract that made it because were rats are immune to the disease. 
um, they were supposed to, they were supposed to be immune to the disease, so they're like, "Here's the cure," and then made them a were rat. Of course, you know, because they got something out of it. Because noble lady, uh, character. Uh, so I made a rule where the only way to get over their immunity to bludgeoning, slashing, and piercing is by silver. And I made the exception that they'd be resistant to it if it was were rat calls. Because if not, why would a bunch of lycanthropes try to fight each other and then not be able to do anything? Because none of them have silver. Um, but they got a silver dagger. They found it in a castle, abandoned castle, and then proceeded not to use it. Because the druid had it instead of an attacker. So, like, there's a reason they failed. Of course. <laughs> like, I gave them two tools that can make the fight easy. Because it was her, like, three of the rat guards that they could instantly go. She can summon rats as an ability. Yeah. I had to make her stat block. But she's, like, queen of rats. Of course she's going to summon rats. Oh, duh. And then, like, two other rat ladies. Uh, they got down to just the wizard and her without using the flute and without using the silver weapon. And they knocked her out. She can't die unless she gets hit with silver because she has regeneration. Yeah. So they knocked her to zero and then she regenerated without it. So I'm like, if you just used what I gave you, you probably would have won the fight. You know? But, the struggles oh well. Of the DM, you know? My bad. Uh, they got saved by a weird um, actor dude who makes plays uh, that um, he always makes them to be tragedies and he thinks they can only be good if uh, he kills everybody at the end of the play. Of course. As per the book. Of course. And so you want to know what character she's inspired off of? Who? Kane from the Amazing Digital Circus. <laughs> and uh, the Celestial Toymaker from Doctor Who. Who? Which are both like over the top extra people that can just control whatever they want. Yeah. And so I made it like um, the hit, just his theater house yeah. is where he has that power, but he can do whatever he wants. Yeah. And so once the play is complete, they're going to have to, spoilers if you're in the campaign, shut up and go away. Um... <laughs> After they can figure out how to fake their deaths from his like bloody death at the end, uh, they can fight him where he's actually really weak because the state of theater and play has gone away from a successful show and he's not inspired to write a new play. Oh. So they have to deal with that where he can basically just do whatever he wants. Like um, like the gimmick is if they, any of them fall unconscious during a fight, because I'm going to have like acts in the play that are supposed to be them choreographed fights and then they're going to become real fights when the actual play happens. Yeah. And he's like, that's not how it's supposed to happen. And he's just going to reset the fight. Of course. Like fully heal them and reset the fight and be like, now do it properly. And he's just going to be like a like the Celestial toy maker, yeah. just a giant like puppeteering all the villains over the stage and stuff. I love that. And then like after he's going to be like a weak little dude with like 20 hit points or something. <laughs> That's only thing is he can make uh, items in his theater come to life mm -hmm. and has as per this is not something I did. This was in the book. This most of this is mine because there's not a lot of information about him. Yeah. Uh, he can catch his entire theater on fire and burn it down. Uh, and the next day it'll be fine, but he is not affected by the fire. Oh, so when they threaten him, he's just going to light his entire theater on fire and then just make random objects in his theater come to life and attack him and try to escape because he can't physically fight himself. But that's like the rem remnants of his like colossal power after a play. Oh, I love that. So it'll be an interesting fight of like, he's not strong, but he's just going to try to prevent you from even getting close to him in the first place. Love. Love it so much. Kat, I want to say thank you for coming. Thank you for being on the show. We've already yet yeah, for 40 minutes. We have. Mm -hmm. And I do have rehearsal tonight. And this I'm, is being recorded late. Yeah, I'm fully expecting Grayson to cut some of this. Um, But I want to say thank you so much for coming. And that, that you're here, I do feel comfortable saying this with my old co-host, is that this is my last um season of the podcast i won't be coming back next season sadly i'll still be here at una for a little bit and i still will i'm not graduating just yet or anything like that um i'll still be working at soda but i won't be doing the podcast this shouldn't be my last episode i don't think i should have at least two more don't quote me on that why are you abandoning everyone i have a lot of personal issues happening right now and i can't handle being a podcast host and talking about things fair enough long story short short shirt sure? short i can't say short today this is like the fifth time i've we just can't not english been. not at all it's not fair but thank you so much for coming i do appreciate it i made a woo and still didn't come up with a topic so you just l listen to me ramble for six hours <laughs> um but if you made it this far thank you and we'll see you guys in the next episode well i'll see you guys hopefully I also, Grayson, hi and bye. I don't know if you'll put I, this in, but I'm going to say it anyway because you have to listen to this. Don't ask me what. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs>